Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, how to train our uh, own LoRa dataset uh, using Rumpact um, models. So um, for this exercise, I prepared a dataset that captures uh, brutalist architecture, uh, but you can actually train any type of LoRa on any type of images. Um, so you can actually look at just facade drawings, plan drawings, um, hand sketches, um, or rendering styles, and these could become uh, kind of LoRa models that you can use uh, for generative images. Um, so I started um, compiling images through Google uh, search, and I basically found some images that I liked, and I basically downloaded these into a folder. So that's uh, what you have to do um, when you begin um, working on your LoRa. So you first need a data set. So I compiled these nine images. And the next step is to actually um, assign a prompt description for all of these. So for each image, you need um, a .txt file that uh, basically describes what is happening in the image, but also uh, kind of uses the keyword you're going to call when you um, use this LoRa. So um, for instance, this is uh, one of the descriptions for image number one. So this is the one of the images um, in my LoRa data set. And the description starts with the keyword that I want to use for my LoRa, which is brutalism. And then these descriptions, you can actually come up with your own descriptions. You have to use comma separated list of uh, words, um, which we call tokens. Um, but you can also automate this process. So let's say you have 30 images that you want to use. You don't want to go, um, go around actually giving um, each image like a custom description. Um, so one way of automating it is you can use um, an LLM, for instance, a large language model. And for this one, I looked at uh, ChatGPT. And um, you can basically uh, use uh, the images of your LoRa. So I uploaded these images and asked it to give me like a prompt description and the LoRa name is going to be Brutalism. It didn't do a good job initially uh, because it gave like a separate CSS file like this. Uh, but then after you fine tune it, um, like can you give the first word as Brutalism and then give all of these descriptions as a, a zip file? Um, it basically, uh, did the task, right? So that's that's kind of like how you can automate this sort of image description. And then if you want to ch check like what's been written uh, under each image, and if you want to ch change any of these keywords or add more, you can simply modify these and save these text images. So that's kind of the, um, the first step of preparing a LoRa dataset. So you need images and a .txt file that goes along. With these, um, with the image description, and each text prompt needs to start with the LoRa keyword that you want to use. After this is done, uh, the next step is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to use uh, Rompot for training our LoRa. Um, so for this uh, example, we're going to use a template that is already on Rompot, um, and you don't need to change uh, select any network volume for this exercise. So I was using kind of a network volume that contained all of the models. But for this one, we're going to be pretty straightforward and just um, train our LoRa on SDXL. And um, I tried a bunch of these. I tried L40S and RTX 1590, but none of them seemed to work with the CUDA. Um, so uh, we're going to use RTX 4090 for this exercise. So just choose RTX 4090 and you can type in here LoRa training for our pod name. And for the pod template, you go to change template and you want to look here, LoRa. And we want to use LoRa training diffusion pipe all in one. And now there are other LoRa training um, packages here. I didn't have time to go over this. Like most of them have been custom templates that are uploaded by users. Um, but this one kind of worked well with 4090 and SDXL, so I would recommend uh, using this one. So once you select it, you just do deploy on demand. And what's going to happen is if you go to logs, um, it will basically create a container. 
And from this container, it's going to download all these models and the files that are necessary. So this will take some time, uh, but once it's done, uh, we will be able to uh, look at how to train um, our lures using this engine. Okay, so Jupyter Lab is ready, and we are going to um, uh, basically run this uh, using um, the folder structure that is already accessible here. Uh, you can start up a terminal, and inside the terminal, we're going to run a bunch of commands. Uh, there's actually um, a program called Interactive Start Training that you can use, um, which basically allows you to um, select the model, select to epochs, like types of uh, training you want to do, which is um, which is pretty easy. Um, and once you want to train your own LoRa, you go to Image Data Set, and then you want to upload your images here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these files inside the Image Data Set uh, folder. Once they're uploaded, you go back here uh, to your terminal and type in bash. And then you want to type in bash inter uh, interactive start training dot sh. And once you start that, this is our um, LoRa's training interface. It's, uh, it's actually pretty easy. So you just choose um, SDXL. You want to try in SDXL. Um, if you try others, you would actually have to pull um, the models from Hugging Face, and you need um, like an access uh, um, access key for those. So uh, SDXL is already um, inside the data set, and um, it will be basically easier for you to run it um, on SDXL. Um, for the data set configuration, uh, it's asking you want to caption images and or videos. So if you choose images only, it will download a model to caption all of the images, um, which will take a lot of time. Uh, but since we went ahead and um, captioned our images with the keyword we want to use for our LoRa, we can actually skip this. So you can do a skip captioning. Uh, I would also recommend using ChatGPT for automating captioning, basically, so that you don't have to waste time here. So you can choose four. Now it's saying uh, the model is going to be SDXL and caption mode is uh, skipped. And uh, now it's finalizing model download. So what it's doing right now is it's getting the uh, the base model for SDXL. Um, now the default settings is we're going to train this 100 epochs. Uh, it's going to save every 10 epoch and lower rank 32, learning rate 0 0.0002. Optimizer Adam W. So if you want to change any of these, you can uh, go to Diffusion Pipe, Examples, and SDXL. These are basically the configurations. You can customize them here. Um, or if you go back, if you're fine with the way these are, you can just say continue with default settings. Um, basically, it's asking for like if you want to pause here and modify those files, um, you can simply hit two modify the training parameters, and then come back here and run the sequence. Um, or you can just simply hit one. And what will happen is it will just make sure that all the models are downloaded. So it's checking the requirements are satisfied. And now it's starting the lower training with SDXL. Um, so this will take a, like some time because um, it's going to also take 100 epochs. Um, but I'll see you at the end of the training and I'll show you how you can download the file and upload it to uh, Comfy UI and work with your custom trained LoRa. Okay, I'm uh, seeing that the training is now complete. Uh, so it should um, basically give us a file um, for the uh, LoRa. So I'm going to go um, back to the main folder. And if you look at the output folder here, under SDXL LoRa, this is the date we made the training. These are all the epochs where the model was saved. If you go to the last one, uh, this LoRa save tensors is basically um, our LoRa file now. Um, so we can use this uh, for generative images. So the first thing you need to do is you need to download it. And this get its file size. It's normally 220 uh, megabytes, like around that number, which means the model is trained well. This is the previous one that I tried uh, using this workflow to make sure that it was working. Um, okay, so I'm uh, I'm actually going to try it uh, on 
a conf UI that I'm running uh, locally uh, to show you how the uh, LoRa works. So um, I downloaded it and then um, I'm going to show you where you have to go. If you go to your models, uh, under models, if you go to um, the LoRa's, this is where you should put um, that custom LoRa um, and you can rename it. So it comes in as lore.safetancers, but you can rename it as like brutalism.safetancers. Um, I would recommend renaming these safetancers with the keywords that you use so that you can call them back. And uh, afterwards in this workflow, we can actually test um, how it runs. So we're going to load our checkpoint, uh, the base model, which is STXL, and then we can uh, use the brutalism that safe answers is our LoRa. Uh, to call the LoRa, we need to use that keyword, uh, and then you can use any other type of uh, text description. And this is my negative prompt. So I'm going to run four images, um, one megabit resolution, and sampler name. Um, I think it was trained on, uh, was it something Adam? Oh, well, I don't see it here, but I think we can use something else. That should be fine. So let's select this portion and run it. So it will load our uh, LoRa now, and it should be um, giving us images um, that are similar to the data set. Okay, so we did a training on 4090, and I'm running an A6000, and you can see this is this is pretty good. So it's kind of capturing. Um, some of the example images that I had. So let me go back. So if you look at these images, like if you want to compare them, um, it is kind of borrowing on these perspectival images, right? I have also orthographic images, um, but it's uh, it's kind of giving nice perspectives. Um, if you want to make sure that your LoRa is working properly, what I would recommend is you just disable the load LoRa component. And I already have the same prompt. I'm not going to change it, but if you run this again, um, it will probably give you different types of images. So you may not have, um, the stable diffusion may not have the images that we selected in its data set training. So that's why we need LoRa's, like LoRa's are actually kind of adding another layer on top of the uh, diffusion so that we can get the output we want. Um, so when you disable it, um, we should actually get these sorts of images. So there you go. It's it's kind of resorting back to um, facades, orthographic images. Um, again, concrete uh, type of um, facades, but not similar to the images that we had in the data set. And one last thing you can try is... <coughs> And one last thing you can try is to um, use the XY plot to see how your um, LoRa kind of works with variations. Uh, so for this one, we can choose the XXL base and the LoRa can be uploaded here. Now, these are the same parameters and I put the same uh, prompt and negative prompt. And here I gave it uh, some basic CFG scale um, and uh, uh, this is, um, the XY input. Oh no, I'm not actually no. Let's go back here. I'm just running four random batches with different seeds, basically. Uh, so let's run this and see what we get. So there you go. Um, so different. We tested different seeds with different CFGs uh, to open up what's kind of happening inside of our LoRa, and uh, you can use XY plots to visualize variations as well and how the prompts are. Um, affecting the outcomes. So um, there are two ways to test your LoRa's. One is um, kind of a default workflow with the, that is adding like another layer on top of the checkpoint. And the other one is the XY plots. Uh, you can also add control nets to, um, to basically influence um, how the outcomes could be shaped uh, with the LoRa. Um, but that's it. Um, so hopefully you can train different types of um, data sets, different LoRa's, and you can use them for uh, 
generative uh, workflows. And I hope this was helpful and um, I'll see you uh, in another video. Take care.